Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Ali Atto. I'm here with you today uh, with the uh, uh, with your connection to source. And today I'm going to talk about something that um, that I've really been living a lot of this last month or so, um, and that is how to stay in flow when you are busy. Uh, before I get into that, I would just mention that I am an instructor um, and a coach with Best Life Creation Society. If you're not familiar with Best Life, uh, Best Life is a group of people who, uh, it's, it's actually an excellent mastermind uh, of people who are just learning how to be their, their best selves, their most empowered selves, and in doing that, learning how to live their, their best lives. And so um, one of the mottos of Best Life that I love is that you are more than you know. And so we are always uh, just looking for, for new ways and creating new ways to tap into source energy, uh, to tap into our inner being, and to just continue to expand. Hi, Jen, and hi, Tammy. Hi, Dory. Uh, nice to see all of you guys. Yeah, Dory, this is... Um, this is a subject I think we all get to enjoy and, and learn how to be more ourselves in and more in flow in. So thank you for being here. So yeah, so Best Life is this incredible mastermind of people who, um, if you're a member of Best Life, you have the opportunity to be on daily calls if you like um, and just continue to learn and grow in these principles. And then we have all of this great stuff um, Facebook Lives every day, lots of content, introductory classes for people who are members, and it's all fantastic. So today we are talking about how to stay in flow when you are busy. And I know for a lot of people, um, especially in, uh, in Canada and the United States, people think of February and March as tax season. You know, there's all of this paperwork, there's all this stuff that has to get done. Um, and, and I know, you know, people can just, you can just hear it if you're out just even chatting with people like, oh, it's tax season. Oh, I'm so busy, especially if you know business owners. Um, and I know for me, February has been a really amazing and really surprising month because um, I knew I had one big project. Um, so I work part time at an, an office while I'm building my coaching business. And I knew that we were going to have a very busy season. February is always very busy for us. And then had uh, two other very seemingly, in my mind's perception, very big projects um, all come up as well. And these times when things come into our experience, it's those moments of, you know, okay, am I going to choose overwhelm or am I going to choose flow? And one thing that I always have to remember is that at some point in my life, I, I have said, I actually a few times to the universe that I wanted to, I wanted to be impactful and I wanted to lead a, a, a life that was full and rich. And, you know, I wanted to be someone that had a lot of interesting things to do um, lots of projects on the go. Um, I just, I wanted a lot of variety, but I wanted to learn how to do that in that state of peace and flow and connectedness and, and having that magic feeling of, of everything working out and the pieces coming together. Uh, and so, you know, I, that's something that I know I intentionally put out there because um, I love, I love creating and I love being in the flow with the universe. And so, of course, this month, um, it's one of those months where when I look at the amount, if I look just with my mind at the amount of work that need, needs to be done, even still, you know, with this last day of the month in February and, and into next week, I could get totally overwhelmed. And I would be lying to you if I didn't say I had moments where I went, oh my goodness, how is this all going to get done? And that's okay, you know, I'm not advocating here, we're not advocating not acknowledging how you're actually feeling. It's just that you don't wanna stay there. Um, you take that piece of information of how you're feeling and then you choose to make a different 
decision and you choose to feel something a little bit different, even if it's just a little bit better if you can. And the reason is that whatever we are feeling right now is an indicator of what's coming to us in the future. So we're manifesting out of what we feel in the present moment. So it's okay to recognize um, when things aren't the way we want them to be. It's just that then we have this incredible opportunity to make a choice to feel better. We have a choice to see something differently. So we know that in the future, um, the things that we want will come to us. So I don't know if, if many of you can relate to this, um, but I'll give you just a little bit of contrast of me before versus me now. So when I was younger or in different points of my life, I actually used to call myself, this was a title for myself, that it was a joke, um, but I just ended up creating more of this. I called myself the burnout queen. <laughs> So anybody who knows about manifesting can be like, oh my gosh, what did you just create for yourself? And it was true. I, I, would, um, I would just get, get involved in projects or things. I, I would throw myself into them so, uh, so intensely um, that I would get burned out. And then, so I'd had this like massive amount of production and then I would be like, on the couch, you know, for a week, and then a massive amount of production on the couch. And I would laugh and say, ha ha, I'm the burnout queen. But I just kept repeating that cycle over and over in my life. Um, and eventually learned through contrast and, you know, thank you universe that we get to learn from these things, that that's not how I wanted to be. And it's not who I wanted to be. I recognized it wasn't healthy. And it wasn't sustainable. And I sometimes wasn't um, working to the quality that I wanted to work. And I started looking around at um, just other people and saying, so how can this person be busy and be happy? How is it this person has more on their plate than I do, but they still have time to go out to dinner with their friends or go on a walk or exercise or meditate? How can they actually do this? And that, those questions, like that life experience, which helped generate those questions is part of what helped me on this journey of learning how to stay in flow as much as, as possible. So, um, so part of what my mind was doing back then and, and, and still now, this is something that like, I just have to stay on top of and be aware of because our minds are these incredible, incredible tools and our mind's job is to protect us from danger and from harm. So, on one end, I would swing back and forth between overwhelm and avoidance. And maybe you've seen this pattern in your life. Um, not overwhelm, but over planning. So sometimes I'd look at something and I'd start thinking about how do I, how do I make this work? How do I chunk this time? You know, I, uh, this task is going to take me this many, many hours and then this many hours and this many hours. And I would try to control, my mind was trying to control the situation by trying to understand how the time was going to work. Because um, my mind kind of felt like if I understood how much time it was going to take, then I could be in control of what was happening. Um, and I could, I could at least kind of think about how I could make this work. Now, a lot of times, because I overdid things, I sometimes didn't know how to say no, and I didn't know how to stay in flow. I didn't know how to connect to the infinite intelligence of the universe very, very consciously anyways. Um, I would go from over planning to getting completely overwhelmed, and then I'd swing into avoidance. So avoidance was, I, my mind would just be like, we can't think about this anymore, because I can't cognitively compute I can't understand how all of this stuff is going to happen in this amount of time or how you have the emotional resources or, or the, you know, the mindset to be able to accomplish this. So we're just going to avoid, we're going to go, you know, binge on some TV or like lay on the couch or just, you know, you know, clean the house. I don't know. I, I was always really good at, um, at cleaning when I had a big project that I didn't know how to finish um, or reading a book just escape, avoid escape, however possible. So if you want to be this person like I did, um, that has a really impactful life that is joyfully creating, that is moving forward, um, in things that, that you're passionate about and love, 
these patterns aren't sustainable. So one of the great things that I learned at Best Life and through different friends and, and personal development is this idea of flow and the idea of staying in this creative space where you only do what feels good to you and you're okay with offering all the other things and all the details up to the universe to handle for you. So, so the difference is that, um, is that before in this state where I was only using my mind, I only was, I was only using the resources that I could kind of comprehend when you connect to source and when you, when you move more towards an understanding that, um, that that connection allows things to happen in your life that don't make sense to your mind. It, it allows things to, to move and to shift to work out for your advantage. Then these things that seem like massive projects actually can happen quickly or, or more easily, or there's t pockets of time that, that open up for you. And so what I've noticed, oh, hi, Tracy, nice to see you. Um, so what I've really noticed in this month of all of these seemingly large tasks happening and, and not really knowing where the time was gonna come from, and instead of worrying about it, just being like, okay, universe, like, you know that I've got all of these things going on, I don't feel like I have the time for it. Um, can you help me out with that? Or, and if it wasn't so directive, just like, it's all okay, everything works out for me. Um, you know, all this stuff is gonna come together in the right time. It's all perfect, it's okay. And you know, there's, I have to tell you, like there's times when that's not just a morning thing and the meditation thing, that's like a daily, uh, that's a, like a throughout the day type of thing. It's okay. It's all working out for me. All of this is going to come together. And then also imagining the satisfaction of those projects being completed and being perfect and everything flowing together with ease. So one of the things I really love, ooh, hi, Donna. Um, one of the things I really love in Abraham Hicks' book um, which is called Ask and It is Given, is this idea of what's called your universal manager. So universal manager is just another name for source, source energy, God, spirit, higher power. Um, but it's the way that they describe the universal manager that helped me out a lot. Because sometimes our mind is just a little bit more soothed with a more concrete analogy of how we can move forward. Because Sometimes I'm um, just saying, oh, I'm just going to give it over to source or universe. Um, maybe that feels too abstract. Maybe. So uh, maybe not. But I know for me, the universal manager helped my, my understanding of, of how the universe works on our behalf. So they talk about um, this idea that if you were running a, if you were running a massive company or, or many, many companies, let's say, um, and you need, wanted to hire someone that was going to take care of things for you because you're wildly successful. You don't want to deal with the management of these things. Um, you're going to hire someone to do that for you because you can. So let's say you hire someone and you're paying them a very good amount of money a year. Let's say you're hired, you hire someone that you're paying $500,000 a year to take care of your businesses for you. So you have this person on staff. You have them basically at your beck and call and you don't ask them to do anything because you don't feel like you can. Does that seem silly? Of course, if you're going to hire a manager, you're going to hire someone and pay them $500,000 a year to manage all of your businesses, you're probably not going to feel too shy to ask that person to take care of a few things for you, right? So the idea with the universal manager is that the universe is like that for us. I mean, obviously it's a kind of a different relationship, but the universe is there saying, let me manage your businesses. Let me manage your relationships. Let me manage your 
personal finances. Let me manage your, you know, the, the little things that you want to come into your life and have happen. Let me manage the big things that you want to have happen in your life. You have this constant connection to infinite intelligence. And the more that we allow a partnership with that infinite intelligence, um, the more we work in conjunction and in cooperation with that, the more things really do just work out for us. So, you know, I, I've had a couple really fun things this month in that I had have a, a bunch of things that needed to get done by a certain time. And I'd be like, well, I don't really have, I don't see the blocks of time. I, don't, I just don't have it, but it, it'll all work out. I'm just not going to worry about it because I'm learning more and more not to worry about it. It's all going to work out. It's all perfect. And something would happen where my husband would call and say, oh, hey, I, I'm actually free right now. And I'm going to take the kids to the grandparents. So, you know, you go ahead and, and just work if you need to work. That happened like three or four times this month where out of the blue, um, very last minute, something shifted and I suddenly had time to do whatever it was that I, I needed to do. Um, I am trying to cook healthy lunches for myself that I can take into work. And, you know, one of the things, one week I was like, oh, I just don't feel like I have the time for this, but whatever, it's okay, it'll work out. And out of the blue, my husband was like, oh, I'll make your lunches for you. He made my lunches for two weeks so that I would have time to work on these projects. Um, and then other things like things shifting at work, seeing, you know, for a while I was resist, I knew I had a little bit of resistance around some projects that needed to be done. And once I got back into like, ah, it's all going to work out. I don't need to worry. Source, you've got this. I'm just going to flow into, you know, what feels good. Um, when I had to do, I had to do a whole bunch of, of phone calls. I found I kept getting the people that were the most helpful. I'd never spoken to them before. Um, and over and over again, I was getting the people who were most helpful, who could help me out, who got things to me fast and just moved things along. Um, and so here's the thing, the more that we're able to stay in this place in with, with source energy in flow, the more we're going to see things come our way. Um, I'm just going to read what Donna says. Yes, that's right, Donna. No more anxiety. Universe, take it and you'll be much more happy. Yep, no more wondering. It's so, it's so true. And it's such a big shift. And, and I, I, I so, so know this. Um, and Donna, I don't know if you were on earlier, earlier, but I said that I used to call myself the burnout queen because I was this like overwhelmed, anxious, striving person and, and and increasingly learning how to be just in flow, in peace. Um, and Jen says, when a situation comes up, acknowledge it. Yep. And look for a better, a better feeling, feeling basically towards the solution. It will flow right in. And it's so true guys. So there's two ways that you can do this. There's, there's more than two, but I'll talk about two right now. So one is, um, let's say you realize like you're thinking a thought you don't want to think like, so I, this is, and this is great because life experiences teach us kind of what's under the surface and what we can shift. So, so I've once in a while said, ah, oh, how am I going to get this all done? I'm like, oh, I don't want to think that because that's an overwhelming thought and I'm just going to continue to create that feeling of how am I going to get this done? So what can I shift? So for me, because it felt good in that moment, I could just say, ah, oh, universe, I'm so glad that everything is going to get done in perfect timing. I'm so glad that everything works out for me. So that I could immediately feel like, ah, oh, nope, I'm back in flow. I can feel like the tension come out of my shoulders. I can feel like I can breathe a little deeper. There's just that greater sense of ease. But let's say I said that phrase because I knew that it's a good phrase to say, but I didn't have the emotional resonance. So that means that that phrase, it's too far away from where I'm feeling to really take root, for me to really feel it and to manifest from that place. Okay, I, I, I'm not actually... Um, feeling that feeling. So like what Jen says, you just look for a slightly better feeling. So, so let's say I said something like, um, how am I going to get this all done? 
how can I say something that will make me feel a little better? I, okay, I acknowledge I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. What feels a little bit better than overwhelmed? You know, um, so, so overwhelmed, maybe I can move to, uh, for me, being slightly irritated feels better than overwhelmed. So maybe the next feeling is, you know, it's really kind of too bad that all this worked out this way. But then maybe I can move it up to, but you know what? It's okay. You know, it's my job and it's all going to work out. Ooh, that feels a little bit lighter to, hey, you know, speaking of things working out, man, I've seen things really work out for me before. And, and you know what? I'm getting paid to do all of this. So, you know, there's lots of work. That means more money for me. That's actually a really good thing. And oh, isn't it cool that the universe brought a way for me to increase my income this month? Totally out of the blue to like, oh, you know what? Wow, you know, the universe really is always working out for me. I, I asked for more money and I have this opportunity to make more money. And you know what? If the universe is bringing me the opportunity to make more money, that must mean that I must be able to do that in a place of ease and flow. And now, like even I could feel, I don't know if you guys could feel it or see it, but I could feel myself slowly getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And so instead of looking at this situation like, almost like a victim mentality of like, oh, how did this all happen to me? And there's so much to do to, oh my gosh, this is an opportunity, you know? And, and, and if this opportunity has come into my life, you know, the universe doesn't give us more than we can handle. So there's a way for me to do this in a place of ease and flow. And if you can't feel that right away, it's another place to just even just say, all right, I acknowledge that I'm feeling this way. Universe, can you help me feel a little bit better? What can I see? What can I, what can I find in my feelings or in my environment? What can I appreciate right now um, to help me feel a little bit better? Ah, uh, I do have an awesome husband, Jen, it's true, and family. Um, oh, thanks, Dory. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so guys, here's the thing, like, we, we really, when we really understand, like, in our inner, we, our inner being understands us, but when this really expands out more and more into us, that every second of the day, we are connected, we are connected to source energy, to the universe, to our universal manager, and our responsibility is to figure out what we want and then do what feels good. Um, so I'm gonna share one more quick process with you that works with, with all of this, with learning how to feel a little bit better, with handing things over to the universal manager. Um, and in, in Asking It Is Given, in the Esther Hicks uh, book, I believe it's called placematting, um, because I think Esther was at a restaurant and she figured this out, writing this on a placemat. And Jen has talked a lot about this process too, where if you have a lot on your plate and you're feeling like it's heavy, take a, a piece of paper and you can split it in half and write on one side of the paper what you feel good doing today, right? So use your emotional guidance system. You know, don't, don't use your mind. Don't think about what you should do today, what you ought to do today, what other people say you should do today, what makes sense to do today. Do what feels right. Think about what feels right and good for me to do today. And you write those things down, think one or two or three things. Like this isn't meant to be a massive list. Um, just because if we start writing too much down, I think we tend to shift into thinking instead of feeling. So just go with what comes up naturally, the one or two or three things that feel really good. And then on the other side of the page, write all the things that, you don't feel good doing today, but that's the universe's side. That's the universe's job. That is you handing something over to the universal manager and saying, can you take care of this for me? And then maybe you get those one or two thing, three things done and you might look at that list on the other side and say, oh yeah, okay, now I feel inspired to do this next thing. Now it feels good. Now, oh, you know what? I just got a phone call or an email or I just met someone and I can see how the universe supported me in getting that other side of the list done. So this is a way where you can very consciously 
um, find and feel those couple things that feel good to you. Um, work on those with that sense of appreciation and flow and everything is working out for you. Allow the universe to take care of the other side of the list and work on those things as they come in and as they feel good. And the magic of this is that when we stay in a state of flow, uh, a state of appreciation, in that state of everything's always working out to me and I'm, I'm always connected, um, that the pieces move together in ways that are to our advantage. Um, pieces move behind the scenes in ways that we, our minds can't even understand. We can't comprehend how the universe shifts, but really like it's constantly shifting to support us. I mean, moving people the right way, moving things the right way, um, you know, opening up, up the traffic lights so you get where you need to go, you know, having that chance encounter, bumping into someone you've been thinking about. I mean, things are really always shifting for us. And the more that we can just flow into that, the more we're going to see these pieces magically come in and it's going to keep enhancing um, that sense of flow and it's going to keep teaching us because all of this is about us learning how to stay in that place how to how to become more um, than we know through flow um, the more experiences we have with this the more it just solidifies inside of us and we want to do it more and we want to have more and create more and be and do more so let me just scan through here really quick yes Looking at things that come to us as opportunities is so powerful, knowing that we choose the thoughts we think and actions we take. Yes, Jen, that is so true and awesome. Yeah, so you're right, Dory, like Kevin Trudeau says, uh, we have to choose the right words to the universe, not complaining, only positive words. And so, yeah, this is just that awareness, right? Like if we notice ourselves complaining, it's not a reason to beat ourselves up. It's just that, oh, I've got a little something here that's not really connected and not flowing. I'm just gonna shift it right now. Like we don't make a big deal about it, we just shift, uh, which, is, which is awesome that we get to do that. Yes, if you don't have Ask and It Is Given, it is a really good and amazing book. Ooh, and Jen says there's a free PDF version online. So that's definitely worth Googling. So awesome, guys. So, oh, hi, Rob. Nice to see you. So guys, you know, this is, again, all about how do we surrender. You know what? I don't actually like love the word surrender all the time, but it is like handing over. How do we hand things over to that universal manager, uh, to the, the person that or the, the being that is immensely qualified for the task? Um, how do we stay in a place of appreciation and flow so that we get to stay increasingly in a place of appreciation and flow? So if you are like me, oftentimes a really busy person, think about it as, because sometimes when we think of the word busy, um, even busy can have that connotation of, oh, I'm so busy. Um, try to shift your thoughts and thinking of, around that to something that feels good to you. Like I, I'm active. I'm a, I, if, if busy doesn't feel good, you find something else. I'm active. I'm vibrant. Um, I've got a, a lot of great things going on for me. Um, I'm always learning and experiencing more and more. And, uh, and use the experiences in your life um, to stay in that state of flow to stay in appreciation, to stay in connection, and always, always to stay in a place of joy and enjoyment with all the things that we get to experience on this planet. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you are in a very busy time of your life, I hope this has helped to give you a couple different ways to approach that. Um, in your thinking and in your feeling and in your connection to source. Um, yeah, and if you are, uh, if you're not familiar with Best Life, I didn't actually post the, the link to our website in the description because I don't think Facebook liked it when I did that last time. But you can go to www.bestlifecreationsociety.com um, if you want to learn a little bit more about us. And then again, you know, our, this Best Life Facebook page, there is content coming out every day. We have a Facebook Live almost every single day. 
Um, and we also have two workshops um, going on during the week. So you actually can join live, like here you can comment, um, but on those workshops, you can actually be a live participant if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you can. You can ask questions um, and get answers and have interaction from the group. So uh, one workshop is always Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, there's another one that is always at 2 p.m. Eastern on, um, on Wednesdays. No, on Thursdays. Forgive me. Um, Oh my gosh, Jen, you'll have to help me out. No, that is on Wednesdays. That is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. is the other Zoom workshop. Um, and we, we do these free classes and Facebook Lives because we are all so passionate about sharing this information. Um, we know in Best Life the improvements we've seen from the power of feeling good and the power of connecting to our source um, and it's just an absolute sh joy to get to share it with the rest of the world. So with that, I love you guys. Hope you have a great week, um, that you stay in a place of ease and joy and flow and connection. All right. Love you guys and talk to you next week.